All right. Hey there, this is Bram Kanstein and you're listening to Bitcoin for Millennials. Together with my guests on this podcast, I go on a journey to discover how our current financial system works, why it's flawed and why Bitcoin is the most relevant technology that you, my fellow millennials, should understand and adopt. In this episode, I'm joined by Prince Philip of Serbia. He's the first monarch to publicly announce being a Bitcoiner. With a background in finance, he's currently the chief strategy officer at Gen3 a Bitcoin technology company focused on expanding access to Bitcoin and financial freedom around the world. As CSO, he engages with high-level actors and oversees strategic initiatives to accelerate Bitcoin adoption for nation states specifically. Welcome, Philip. Thanks for your Thank time you. and Thanks coming for on. Me on. Yeah, you've, you've already uh, done my Jan 3 part. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think uh, actually yesterday, I think I saw a picture of uh, of, of Samson, uh, Gentry CEO, uh, with uh, President of Colombia, and two days before they were in Suriname. So correct, yeah, yeah he's been doing the rounds this year. He's been a, he's been traveling a lot this year, and then as you as you correctly said, right now, right now, this second, as I'm drinking my. Uh, <laughs> Colombian coffee. Oh, he's nice. in Colombia <laughs> in my Jan three mug. Nice. He that... is in. He is in uh, in Colombia with uh, two of our teammates, uh, with Edwin Rivas, head of head of marketing, and and Raúl uh, Velasquez, who's uh, also uh, I guess he's head of nation state adoption as well. At uh, he was uh, head of um, uh, social media, but now he's uh, got got the upgrade. Nice. And they're they're all three together meeting the president of Colombia. And before that, with Ben uh, Van Hul, who yeah. uh, we talked to, briefly talked about before, he's in that uh, they were in Suriname of all places. So putting well, Suriname that's an on ex, the map, uh, ex colony of uh, of of my country, correct? So, yeah. um, and I, I find it very interesting. Like uh, I, I I know some people have also been there in like. Uh, um, um, like a political context, uh, like on uh, trade trips and stuff like that. And it's interesting to know that actually still in Suriname, they look a lot still at the Netherlands. They even watch Dutch TV and stuff uh, stuff like that. So I find it interesting that, well, they were in Suriname for, for with, a, with a Bitcoin context. So I, I think it could be interesting for, you know, these ex-colonies to actually... Mm break a bit more free break, of, of, yes. of the old uh, cololonizers right yes get that get more get more sovereignty get that autonomy going and yeah, ex- uh, they've, exactly. got, they've got the right energy uh, set up there to uh, to make that happen it's quite an exciting case we were connected with the foreign minister there mm. and we've had very good conversations with them about how they could potentially adopt Bitcoin so got on, ongoing conversations but uh, nonetheless uh, seems to be quite fr- uh, fruitful yeah We'll talk about uh, nation state adoption and, and sure. what Gen3 does uh, later. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm super fascinated with that, especially this, this angle. First, I wanted to ask you what, what has been, you know, obviously you're a Bitcoiner now, but uh, mm-hmm. before, like what was, who, who or what has been most influential in shaping your ideas about money, risk, wealth? Pre-Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, I would say that was... Going into finance, look, when I, I went into university, I didn't know exactly what I was going to do, but there's, uh, you get somewhat pressure from your parents and people saying, yeah, you know, if you want to make money, you, get, you maybe get into finance or, or yeah, finance. That's where the money is. Like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that was really bad advice to tell the truth. I'm, I'm going to tell you because they, they should have said, no, get into IT because that's really when the IT was blowing up. And this is what I'm talking about in the mid 2000s. Mm. Uh, but, but I still, you know, being a good boy, I was like, okay, I'll get into finance. And I started first working for, uh, after I finished university, my first uh, stint was at an, an, an Icelandic bank where I did my gr- uh, graduate training program. And about a year and a half, two years later, it, that's when the financial crisis hit. And that particular Icelandic bank, like most, of, like all the other Icelandic banks were, highly levered up to the to yeah. the max and they really really blew up in in the country i was working in the city in london mm. and they ceased to exist in in uh, in london so they they went belly up in london and they had to basically all the operations just went back to uh back to iceland i never made it to iceland which was a shame because i've always wanted to go but yeah that was uh, my first experience of uh, of finance and i was that's what I, I do. I was doing a training graduate tr- rotational program where I went from the different departments at, in, yeah, the, yeah, in the bank yeah. and I learned, I learned what I thought was quite a lot about finance, getting an understanding about uh, um, 
just basics of accounting to equities, to fixed income, to uh, mergers and acquisitions and all that, because I've come from a language background. And the reason they hired me is because of my languages and they think that I was maybe, let's say, a little cultured couth, thinking that, you know, you can train me up and to understand the finance, but I know the languages I'm, mm -hmm. and, I will, and I've seen well presented, I guess. So that's worked, worked out to until just months before it blew up, I actually decided to leave the industry not knowing very well what the uh, the shitstorm ahead was going to be like, but uh, I left. It was great foresight. <laughs> great foresight. I'm not going to say that my uh, my uh, was very in tune. I think it was more luck than anything. <laughs> but when I left, I went I went into uh, hospitality management, and I did st I studied at Lausanne in Switzerland at the hotel school in Lausanne. Mm. It's actually there where I gained my most professional experience. Uh, they really sort of uh, molded you into little professionals mm. at this ho hotel hospitality management school because not only do you learn about hotels and man managing restaurants and hosp you know places of of like uh, hospitality, you also learn a lot about business and and how to balance books and how to how to uh, write professionally and all that. And it was you were suited and booted every day, up, up early, really Swiss molded like you know on time all the time yeah. and i was i was impressed by that having left that i went working at the ritz hotel for less less than a year but then i had the itch to go back into finance and that's when i ended up back into a hedge fund working in cyprus all the while learning more about finance understanding and this was about 2009 10 it all when i when i went back into finance i thought things were going to pick up again which they did but this was also while quantitative easing and the whole European uh, sovereign debt crisis was happening. So I was learning a bit, little, bit, little bit about what the, the, that macro situation was about, but not fully understanding, not fully under getting the fact how dangerous quantitative easing is. I thought that was just a clever fix that the Japanese had come up with and it would work with us and we would get over it. And uh, next thing you know, uh, leaving Cyprus, I ended up in London working for a uh, very renowned um, asset manager, L Lazard Asset Management, in, uh, in a particular the quantitative equities team. And there I thought I really learned more about finance. I thought I learned how, uh, how it all worked. You know, I was, I was doing a lot of investment writing, portfolio analysis and financial analysis. And I was really trying to figure out, I was doing a lot of the macro, macro analysis for them, um, for the team I was working for. Thinking, yeah, I knew what was going on. Then in 2017, I learned, I heard, I mean, I heard about Bitcoin before that, back in 2012, but I sort of instantly brushed aside saying, you know, whatever, it's just some magic internet money that you can buy drugs over the internet or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of the things I wanted to ask you yeah. know, as to why you didn't see it. But but I find it interesting. I, I, I also worked in... in um, uh, at, at two banks, basically, I didn't do uh, so. The first one I worked at was more like freelance, so I didn't do the whole traineeship, as you mentioned, yeah. right? Like that's pretty classic that you go to, you know, all the business lines of a bank, and then you you learn like the inner workings. So I I wanted to ask you, and it's fascinating. You you talk about this like while you're in it, and you did the traineeship, right? You, you just said like I still didn't really know how it actually all worked. Right. Yes, <laughs> that's fascinating because I the think... people on the other side, right, that that we try to help also with Bitcoin, etc. Like, how can they expect to understand it? Exactly, but that's a very good point. I think when I was in finance, in the let's say traditional finance, tri-fi traditional finance, that people, a lot of people thought they knew what they're talking about, but it's clearly it's obvious that there was a lot of uh, a lot of bullshitting basically there was a mm. lot of um a lot of people just talking a lot a lot of hot air a yeah. lot of and here's the thing that i found quite interesting what I, what I started to really pick up on is that a lot of it was actually just this terms terms that could be very much more simplified but made complicated so people <laughs> sounded intelligent but maybe even served i'd hate to say it, as an some as, as, as a more nefarious Mm. Um, that's the most nefarious uh, uh, thing because it made it actually creates barriers for other people, for people without the education to not understand what the hell is going on. And uh, even though the people who understand, who should know what's going on, they don't really know what's going mm. on, but they like to use all this fancy language. Yeah. But 
then that fancy language is not understood by the other people. So the whole thing's absolute mess. No yeah, one yeah, knows what's going on. No one knows what's going on. Even the, yeah. the only people that know exactly what's going on is if you, if you go to the upper echelons of the bank and you go to the CEO and just under the management there, they know what's going on. That's why they're there. Mm. But I think the most of the, the rest of the bank, they're there for functions. They're good yeah. at what they do in their particular positions. They're in, intelligent people. They've done their, their education. They, they, they know how to manage their products and stuff. But when it comes to the whole larger, bigger picture mm. of what, what is money and how the system, the whole system works, that is not taught to them. That is not taught to us. We are taught just about enough to know how, how to, how to, how to survive in the system, but not how the system works. Because if we learn how it works, then I guess there will be other problems for mm. those who control it. Yeah, it's like you are the cog in the in the machine, mm -hmm. and that and that is the frame within the uh, you know for, for, yeah. from within you you work. That, but yeah, <laughs> that cog can't get too intelligent because if you get too many intelligent cogs, they'll start to uh, break free from the machine. And that's <laughs> yes, exactly what's happening. What, yeah. yeah, that's exactly what's happening with Bitcoin. You're getting a lot of orange cogs out there just popping mm. out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fascinating. I, I totally can relate to the obfuscation or the all the abstraction. You know, uh, that's that, a good yeah, obfuscation abstract, yeah. abstractions. Yeah, but that's like a real fiat thing, I'd say. Right, like Completely. literally what you just described. You know, I'm using certain terms and things and. And and they have weight because I have a certain place in the hierarchy in 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 a corporation, and that's why other people then listen to me. But that does not mean that I understand <laughs> what what is actually yeah. uh, happening or how it's working. And yeah, it's so fascinating. Like I've had like these um, meetings. You know, you have meetings with like ten people, and then this whole meeting, a certain boss talks about certain you know, uh, how do you say, like uh, abbreviations and terms and, and whatever. And I've had, I had a few moments where then we walked out of this meeting and then I would ask like some people like, do you know what this term means? No, no, I have no <laughs> clue. I have no clue. But they did participate in the meeting, right? And yeah, I find it it's so interesting because um, I also talked about this in a previous conversation. Like it also, so I work more like the innovation department. Mm -hmm. So helping teams to explore and validate like new ideas to expand like business etc uh, mostly like in the digital part um but i had a lot of uh, well most ideas are bad right so you have to do research and think about okay well uh the bad ideas we have to kill uh, quickly and if there's a good idea we have to invest in that right but there's there's all this i would say urgency for individual people to create something right and put their name uh, uh, mm. uh, uh, on something to just climb the internal ladder basically and I had so many discussions about okay but you say you have to continue now with this uh, project and I say you should kill it right and you say you should spend uh, I don't know another 200k on whatever the next phase of this project is and I, I asked so many times like would you invest if this was your own company and your own money <laughs> right in this little new business thing and Always the answer was no, but because these people work in an environment where, you know, the, the business model, the, the, the core business model of loans and mortgages and stuff like that's so predictable, like every bank makes so much money just off those products, right? Like 85% of profits and, and turnover comes just from loans and stuff because it's so predictable. So there is not really an urgency to really innovate or critically think about should I go left or right or what should I spend? And and yeah, like there is no urgency. So people can play these games because there's, but that's there's, it. there's just games. enough money. Yeah, And it's always if... It's always that the system with other people's money, yeah, also. Without the, because the <laughs> yeah. system, the way it's, it's set up with uh, the way fiat is set up, it's uh, yes, it is a game. It's 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 almost virtual, and it can be and it can be gamed. And yeah. if it can be gamed, it will be gamed, and so people will go yeah. out and seek ways of of bettering it to their advantage. And yeah. those who are at a better advantage than other people, according to their job positions, how close they are to connected and all that will yeah. end up on top and it's in their interest for survival to go ahead and do that and i say that maybe not they don't do this with evil intent but uh that is the survival uh, yes, yeah, ways yeah. Of, of fiat and it's i also don't think it's highly, uh, yeah. it's highly detrimental to, to society <laughs> yeah yeah i agree like i also don't think it's 
for most people who work at a bank, it's not there's no malicious intent. Like no, I, I also no. learned a lot, right, in communication and stuff like that. So it's 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 interesting to work there. But if you don't, now that we're talking about this, I actually realize you know a lot of people in Bitcoin talk about the, the Cantillon effect, right? The people closer yes. closest to the money creation benefit the most from it. Even if you, when you work at a bank, I, I now just realized you are also closer to the money in a sense, right? Because yeah, you much, have, yeah. <laughs> even when your role is, I don't know, the role I had, I still got freedom <laughs> to, you know, participate or at least see this game. You know, I, I didn't enjoy that. Uh, that's also why I left. But yeah, your life becomes easier even when you work at a bank, just because it's a bank, right? So you're you're also, in an essence, kind of profiting from this Cantillon effect, just because you are in this, yeah, kind of like uh, free, oh, correct. Th- this yeah play space. I don't know how to call it. That sounds uh, kind of derogatory, perhaps for some people in banking. But I I feel I yeah, it's interesting that. Well, I um, think when you, yeah. and the people working in that, like you know, up, up uh, lower middle and middle and not so much upper management. They as you said, it's not the, they don't they don't have the fairest intent. No, it's just when a they're job. in the bank. They just it's a job. Yeah. But uh, what they do, there, there is nefarious intent, but that's controlled by the upper. Echelons mm. who um, who control the system. I mean, yeah, that's yeah, that's that's my uh, overview of the whole of the whole situation. And I guess once you st- when you start to understand that, and you understand that, yeah, there's a lot of barriers of entry for a lot of the for a lot of people. Not just getting into finance to have a job, but also getting into finance if you're a, a, an average day to day worker, brick and mortar shop person. You are getting you know. Thanks to the cantal on effects, thanks to these um, barriers of entry, you are having a hard time financing your, your business, and you are borrowing money at such high levels. Whereas those big, the big, the big guys, the banks who lend out to or to to the other big guys, they're they're getting money at uh, at uh, at next or well, at, at close to the to the to the uh, to the rate of what of, of the interest rate. So it's yeah. it really is stacked up against the, the, the small people. Yeah. And when you start to realize that, you really realize how really dangerous the whole thing is and how evil it is really and it, it needs that needs to be fixed that needs to be corrected and so how do you look back on on this part of your career i look back on it well actually because it taught me a lot it didn't teach me everything but uh, i learned a lot i met a lot of interesting people as I, as we as we discussed <laughs> all these people have no ill intent no evil intent they just they just they to their jobs and a lot of them are smart in their own respect. You know, I've met some really smart people who are very well researched in their subjects. That they also have uh, other really, you know, impressive hobbies and, and lives and all that. And yeah. I met, you know, socially had a really good time with a lot of very interesting people. I also look back at it kindly because it, it paid well and I was able to enjoy a relatively comfortable life, kind of carefree. But that was also dangerous for me to think about it is that, you know, you were working like, I wouldn't say paycheck to paycheck. It was because I was able to, to save a little bit, but I was uh, basically looking forward to Friday nights to go out and, and, and spend that money I earned and, and, and be part of that. Uh, uh, let's call it that part of, yeah, that part of the fiat where, 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 where you just spend without thinking about tomorrow, the instant, grat- the instant gratification part, which... Yeah. Something that I don't do anymore these days, of course. Yeah, <laughs> that's interesting. That I, especially that I have a family and everything, and that's more that's more important. But we can come to that afterwards. But yeah, during, yeah, my, I, during my fiat working days, that was like a big part. It's like, yeah, I have money. I have, uh, I, I've worked hard, so I'm going to go play hard. Mm. And you know that whole work hard to play hard. I, it, I guess if the philosophy is, is is some flaw to that philosophy, if if you if if you're not actually if, if you're doing damage to yourself by going out drinking and and and, and staying up all weekend and, and and not working on yourself or just working on fam, you know it's it was destructive to some extent, but it was fun until until you realize <laughs> exactly. how destructive and how yeah. how it's unsustainable and how mm. you will just end up an old miserable man at some point if you continue that going into your fifth forties fifties. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Also, I think we'll get to that. But once you see, once you see Bitcoin for what it is and compare it to like a current system, you you understand this what you just said more. I think like how yes how being more aware of time or uh, like where you spend your time and what brings joy and that's you know. Well, that's thanks to yeah. actually, uh, I would say, 
meeting my wife, getting married and having a son. And this is more or less lines up to the time when I first got into Bitcoin. Yes, I was distracted by the shit coins, but it was around that time. And then then in 2020, when the, the when COVID, the pandemic hit, that's when I really started studying more about Bitcoin. I mean, yeah. I've written about this before. That's when I've turned into a maxi. When I studied more about Bitcoin, I realized, okay, this is really it. And a couple of years later after that, I I went public on that TV show, the the evening show here in Serbia, the biggest evening show in, in Serbia, mm. the Ivan Ivanovic show. And I went public about Bitcoin. And the next because thing you know, said crypto, and then you said no, 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 only Bitcoin, yeah, yeah, or something no, like oh, that. Right? It's not, it's not, 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 not crypto. It's only about Bitcoin, and yeah, uh, yeah. then did some sort of three, unplanned three, two or three minute spiel about Bitcoin, completely yeah. unplanned. I had no idea he was gonna he was gonna surprise me with that, but I'm happy he did because at the end of the day, it's, it's what led me to 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 go on podcasts like the, my first ever podcast with Daniel Prince, Once Bit and Oh podcast. yeah, yeah, cool, yeah. I then talked safe, to Daniel yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Oh great, yeah, great nice. guy. He was he was so helpful in, in my uh in my in my initiation into into the Bitcoin world, I'd say because Very cool, uh, yeah. he helped me um introduce me to a lot of people and we we went to Miami together and then it's in Miami I got offered the job by Samson. And I was also went on to on Safety's podcast, which was massive for me. The fact that I was I was listening to Safety's podcast a year or two beforehand and thinking, "Wow, this is such a cool, amazing podcast. These guys are so intelligent, smart." And I wish one day maybe you know. And then the next thing I know, I'm on it. <laughs> yeah, super fun. Well, so I was really surreal that. <laughs> well, I I think like I this is uh, I think we are recording episode twenty ish of 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 this podcast, uh -huh. you know, and I find it so fun that people in this space are so approachable and 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 easy to connect with and open you know and and like you have quick connections with people and i think in in it's kind of like a general team i see it's like whatever your background is or religion or whatever like in bitcoin people connect because they know that you you know the other person did the work as right. well like exactly. it's 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 hard Right. And especially, um, well, you have this yeah, background exactly. in finance. You, and you, when you get together with a bunch of Bitcoiners, you can cut the small talk. You can get yeah, exactly. straight to it. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's because, yeah, I was thinking about this the other day. I mean, I'm sure many Bitcoiners have, we, Bitcoiners have thought of everything. But I mean, it's because we're, uh, our minds have been freed completely. Mm. We are we we are much more open minded. This is why we are more more ahead of the uh, ahead of the curve in, in figuring out Bitcoin. You know, that's the old saying: you get you get Bitcoin at the price you deserve. Uh, luckily for us, we because of our of our tendencies to have more open minds uh, minds. Maybe we have uh, more agency than than the rest of the the rest of the population. Thanks to that, we we are where we are talking about Bitcoin. But at the same time, it's also a bit of a lonely world because. <laughs> When yes. I go back to my normal fiat world, I say go back to my fiat. When I go back to it, I have a lot of friends still in London. When I, I moved to Serbia in 2020, but then I speak, but that's also when I became a maximalist is when I moved to Serbia. But then when I communicate to a lot of my friends back in London and they figured out that I've become a maximalist, they, uh, they, they, they see me, I guess, uh, on some uh, on some podcast, or they've probably seen me on Twitter yeah, yeah, yeah. or something like that, and they're like, "Well, what's what what what, ra what radicalized you, Philip? Did Serbia radicalize you? You know, you you know, because also I was a bit uh, opinionated on certain aspects of the COVID of the of of the pandemic. You know, like I, I told people not to take experimental uh, procedures and things like that, and it's like, oh, what 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 happened to you, Philip? So the, the Serbs radicalized you, or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, guys, you don't you don't see it, you're not aware of it, and then I realized well, this but, is fascinating. Don't yeah. you think like the 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 like counter arguments are very yeah, really, but like I, what you just said, it's not nice, right? It's very. No. It's you not know, nice, it, but then I've, I then yeah. have to put my, I have to then correct myself and say, well, Philip, come on, you were in their shoes like a few, uh, two, three years yeah, ago. Yeah, 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 exactly. You have yeah. to say if someone like you came and spoke to you, spoke to you like you are speaking to them right now, yeah. you would, uh, you would, you would be like, crazy. hey, this guy's a, this guy's crazy. Give them some yeah. time. Their minds. So going back to the thing, their minds mm -hmm. are not as open and as free yet. Yeah. They don't. They don't. Uh, uh, they don't show agency like other people, uh, like like you and other Bitcoiners do yet. So give them time. Mm. You can only do a certain amount, but don't waste your energy. And yeah. Don't make any uh, make any enemies. Yes, these guys might be completely do indoctrinated or, or a little bit too liberal or woke or whatever for your liking, but uh, that's that's not really their fault. That's been that's 
just sort of the system is programmed that way. They, uh, yeah. They've watched a bit too much MSM. They've watched they they the algorithms have taken the best of them. But remember, they're still good people. They still care and all that. They just they just haven't figured it out. So just go with it, stick with it, and um, and slowly they will start to understand it. Maybe the hard way, but they'll get it. Mm. And, uh, and they have, you know, if they are in London and in finance, they have the the life that you described, right? They are having fun and and not really well you know everyone has struggles and problems and and whatnot but in general they feel like life is probably good right and so oh, of if, course and it, so they think yeah. life is good so they'll they think that because life is good that they'll protect what's good for them yes, and of that's course. because if they think they're doing well then they will continue doing that and thinking yeah. that the world the world is fine because i'm doing fine yeah. very selfish at the same time but well, well you I, you have a newborn, right? I have a son as well. Like you see yes. in in young kids, the self preservation is that's a natural thing. That is you so know, you, true. You cannot yes. think around that. You cannot. Oh, tell me that about it. Or, yeah, yeah. Uh, our, our newborn's like what? Just three three weeks coming up to four weeks, and mm. uh, the self preservation is strong with her, which I'm happy. She's right. uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she wants to live. Right? She wants yeah. to live, and she she tells us about it. She knows. She makes herself known as well. Like, um, yeah, she's yeah, yeah. A lot different to our son when he was born. He was a little bit more. Uh, let's say not complaining so mm. <laughs> <laughs> but she's fantastic she's beautiful yeah. and she's strong and uh, yeah so yeah but right, you see that lucky. right you, you see that already so it makes sense that that what you just said also once you see another side and you realize hey I've been duped, but I also took advantage of the situation. I didn't really complain. I also wasn't aware, right? Like, it's very confusing. It is. It's but a I confusing realization, right? And it takes it time and, and self-reflection to it, 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 get there. It, 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 to, to be a Bitcoin, you have to understand that you, are with, that you have to get out and look at the paradigm that we're living in and know and understand that there's a better paradigm that we can move towards to. And that yes. zooming out is very... Mm. It's, is is a form of mental gymnastics that a lot of people will find it hard to do without without help. A lot of us did it without much help. There wasn't that much material a few years ago, but I say today, and there's going to be better, better material. But still, having said that, that that mental that that that, that jump to figure out to to mm. figure to fit to to, to fit, figure out that the paradigm that we're living in right now is completely broken distorted and uh, works against most of humanity yeah and that there's a better paradigm waiting for us and that is a bitcoin standard to understand that jump is uh it's going to be tough for a lot of people but it's not as tough i mean i'd say it's easier to to to, to change your political views i mean i don't like <clears> to, 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 to subscribe to the whole left and right thing and you know authoritarian libertarian thing but um the whole protect political compass will become almost irrelevant in under a bitcoin standard but I say the men mental yeah, gymnastic jump yeah. from going left to right is already a strong enough jump. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But then going from left to right and from right to understanding and to just zooming out and realizing this is bullshit, there's actually a Bitcoin standard. That's an even bigger gymnastics. Mm. Yeah. And I don't think yeah. a lot of Bitcoiners maybe haven't reached that point yet. You know, a lot of Bitcoiners maybe are seeing a little bit too much right, but... Well, I think what you describe <laughs> is, you know, being right or something. Some, so I, I think... Perhaps there it's more about how what your opinions are about something, but if you yeah. peel it peel it back peel it further, back, yeah. it's it's really about like who am I, right? It's 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 uh, that's why I find the the journey of people of different people so interesting. Like it's actually way more spiritual in a sense. Like what you just described, you can only get there if you park your ego, right? And, yes, and, and then you zoom out. And then it's kind of you confront the ego with the realization you got, right? And that's, and that's when I that's when you're battle. that's yeah, that's when you go right, and that's when you're right. That's what. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that's when a lot of my friends and stuff say, "Oh, yeah, you've gone. Oh, you, you're so far right now, Philip." I was like, "No, so far I'm right." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Well, actually, no. Yeah. Yeah, but that's the whole because but yeah I, at that point i guess in my political beliefs have become much more right uh but i but maybe I don't... you were super left right if you if you well, be, I, I heard elon musk say this as in uh, about x right like how yeah. he says well you hear more right opinions and now you hear people say like oh it's so extreme right or whatever like it's become a like a, a, a curse word without substance or something but he said no Twitter or X 
was on the far left. So on the far left. So any, any move that we do towards the middle <laughs> feels yes. like we're going to the right. There's, for that, a lot there's of that meme that, you know, with the political compass and the yeah, top yeah, yeah, left-hand exactly. corner yeah. is like, you know, n- normal people, inverted brackets. And then there's an, one band outside, <laughs> yeah. outside that, yeah. and that's like, uh, it's, it's uh, alt-right. And then the rest basically of the of the of Nazis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's so stupid because like uh, <laughs> two weeks ago, we had elections in my country. And uh, I think a few months ago when the cabinet fell, I made a list of things. Like I thought like, okay, what is stuff I find important and who who represents that, right? If there's new elections, like who represents it? So I made a list. I don't know. I just, it was like a brain dump, I don't know, like 50 things. And I just went through it. And some things I think like, oh, this is I don't even, uh, to be honest, like, I don't know what left or right actually is or socialism or fashion. Like, I don't know the definitions or what people then would do or whatever. But I went through it and then I had these thoughts like, hmm, I think I'm very left here. Oh, I think I'm pretty right here. And then I went through it and then it was like basically 50-50, right? Or so, so something you'll like that. You'll probably find that if you did that, you'll end up somewhere on uh, a center but right. it's so yeah. nuanced, right? Yeah. It's so, everything it's so new, is so yeah. nuanced. And, and, and the current climate of you are, you know, black, white, for, against, left, right. Like it, it's just, it's not a representation of how intricate the, the, the world is and how lots of things Perhaps sometimes from the but past then all or that whatever stuff are is so used, connected. All that stuff is used against us, and that's where we are today. Yeah, it's highlighting the fact that we are, you know, X, Y, Z, black, white, all that, and then it's like using that divisions to uh, to divide us, to divide us even further. So yeah. And so, what's the biggest thing? Thing then? I, I think you just mentioned it, but like, what's the biggest thing that people don't understand about the current, let's say, financial system, and why should they actually understand? Like that thing first. What what would that be? I think a lot of people think that this two uh, percent inflation target is uh, is a good thing for the economy. That's really cor- uh, so f- uh, incorrect. That the need for the two percent is good for the economy, good for growth, good for um, for just yeah for 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 for, for life to, to continue. And mm. then they th- and then they think a deflationary economy is is going to slow everything down and 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 everything's going to break, and they don't take a step back and realize that actually no, you would if you yeah the reason why there's a there's a two percent target it's because that target it's been looked at very it's carefully. The carrot, it's actually yes, the, the carrot, carrot on, the, on the stick. Actually. Yeah, <laughs> right. and it's looked at very carefully. It's just about enough to yeah. uh, to trick people into thinking that it's a good thing, but realizing that, oh, you know, 2% over, like, I'm not, I'm going to just do some very bad math. So if you're 2% over, like, 20 years means, like, 50% of your savings have disappeared. Yeah. So it's so dangerous that. And that's why you need to keep working and your brain yeah, exactly. occupied. With, you, yeah, exactly. That's, what, yeah. that's the fuel that keeps the, 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 um, the hamster wheel <laughs> turning mm-hmm. really it really is it's it's it you know the rat race c- continues with that two percent inflation which is horrible yeah and uh, people think that oh yes yeah, so if you have deflationary money people will just end up saving it they won't put it into the economy we will uh we won't have growth and all that well actually no actually people uh, more purposeful growth is yes, the answer exactly. that, that people we feel would comfortable have. this is where your time preference gets lowered and this is the beautiful side apart about it then you'll get comfortable that you know that your money is protected of course, I'm talking about Bitcoin over here. Yes, we can talk about gold, but gold has its weaknesses that like you have to trust it with a third party. And then that, and then, then that leads to uh, other, you other three games, machines other, to check yeah, if it's real. Yeah, gold. exactly. So, <laughs> yeah. but if you have a savings technology that, that just protects your wealth over time, and you know that in, in, in 20, yeah. 30, 40, 50, 60 years time, that your savings are going to be protected and not only protected, but they will continue to grow, then you will be comfortable. You will have a nice, less stress time and then you can start building mm. actually things that matter things yeah. that will last in, into the, in, into um because into you the have future. time to figure it yeah. out right yeah, like time what to is figure my it out. Contr- yeah. what is my contribution what do that, i want etc exactly yeah. and that includes making families you know the, the mm. you know that that includes building your family that includes uh well just doing doing the words using the word sustainable in the right way, doing sustainable businesses actually with not just like, uh, not, not, I'm not prescribing to what the what Keynesian model has, has, has created is this, uh, 
model of, of planned obsolescence where you just get all this junk that go that, that gets broken after a few after a few years that needs yes. to be replaced to keep the the growth model happening no people will build things that last yeah. people will build buildings this is, by that the last. way a good point right they are incentivized to not make nice yes the incentivized right? I have, yes uh, i have yes. this old <laughs> house i live in a 19 19 uh, this house is from 1902 and if you like look at this door you know like something like that and even the door, like this, the the like the line, I can right? See the lining, yeah. That's a bit Art Deco style. It's beautiful. And, you know, it, and this is still like pretty, let's say, basic in the old time. But I mean, like all the doors right now are straight, right? And so yes. in the, in this time, like 120 years ago, the carpenter was like, hmm, "I'm gonna make this door a bit nicer because I can do that." And then I'm proud of the door that I made, right? And now it's just. And he's going to use good materials at last, strong materials at last. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's wild. I, 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 yeah. But it's actually very counterintuitive, right? Because if you say like, okay, the economy will keep growing because people will keep buying stuff because we make it break after, you know, we don't make it last 100 years. Well, then yeah. all those second and third order effects of that, I think that is actually what... In Bitcoin, we talk about a lot, exactly. right? Like that, that, and, and in economics, they don't talk about they those don't want things to. or like how it fries well, your brain Aust- or only whatever. Only in Austrian economics, they actually talk about that. You know, yeah, that's what takes it down to the pure, to the pure. Uh, what, what is you know, uh, they they go to to what you know to the advantages. No, what natural order that. Wealth, I mean, uh, value is subjective. That we are all at different points of uh, of our of our journey of our growth and so, and so forth. Yeah, and we're not all grouped together in the same in the same bucket and expected to 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 put to uh, to adhere to these GDP growth models and all that sort of quarterly bullshit. To just that is just yeah, advertised around the world as a way that we have to keep up and keep them and to keep the horse moving and all that sort of stuff. It's just bullshit, you know. It's just so yeah. much simpler and and, and 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 totally unsustainable. Uh, completely okay. unsustainable. And, yeah. yeah. And so you just mentioned when you found Bitcoin in 2012, you still had a closed mind because you fought drugs and all these things. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, what, just, made, what, what belief made you not get it? Like what, it what, was, where was your mind it, at? It was just like, oh yeah, magic internet money. I thought I didn't really see it. I uh, did not understand. Or it was literally a conversation with uh, two or three people. And it was on the lines of like, oh, look at Bitcoin. It's like about $30 or something. Is it going to go to $100? Uh, oh, interesting. I don't know. Yeah, what? It, yeah, in Bitcoin. Oh, yeah, but like that's like that internet money. I didn't realize what it was there to do. What you know, what it was going to be. I didn't realize that it could be an investment or savings or anything. I just didn't really not pick up on that. I just thought that some, it, it some some geeks created some money that you can use to buy stuff on 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 the internet, and that was it. Didn't yeah. didn't really look at any further than that. It wasn't until 2017, my my very good friend in London. He said, "Oh, Philip, look at look at Bitcoin. This is early seventeen. Uh, it's it's uh, he was the one who introduced me to it in, in, a, in a better way. He says, oh, look at look at Bitcoin. I just got into it. It's an inflation hedge. You know, there's only going to be twenty one million. I was like, well, that's interesting. Mm. So then I said, okay, I'm going to invest a little bit. He taught me how to get onto Coinbase and buy some. And I was like, what's Ethereum? What's Litecoin? Oh, those are some other things that have a good chance of making it and stuff like that. And I obviously got distracted yeah. there. But my main belief always was in Bitcoin. That was my main holdings and stuff. And I always was like pretty determined on Bitcoin. But of course, being still in the fiat mindset, I wanted to make money. So I went in there with the whole the whole saying, you know, went in there to make money, but then I ended up staying for the for the <laughs> for the money to revolution. Yeah. And had I known had I known what I knew what I know now, I would have probably had a much bigger stack. I mean, yeah. my stack is all gone. I lost it in, in an accident in, in, of, of a boating variety. A boating was, accident, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard uh, that. But uh, yeah, let's say that when I did have Bitcoin and had had I learned about what I learned about recently, I would have been stacking much more religiously and um, and methodically and 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 have and have much more schedule about it. It would that didn't really come until 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 twenty twenties. It's. I find it. What I find so interesting is that the people who are really deep in the fiat mindset, right? And and when you say 2012, you were still in finance, right? People who don't escape that, and they will see Bitcoin last. So yes. they're profiting from the corrupt or the broken system a lot, and because they're so into it, their mind is so closed, and and they will not see 
what the lifeboat is out of that, right? I find that very, I don't know which like uh, historical or old uh, classic myth or story we can attach to that, but it's it's an interesting arc, I'd say. Yeah. That... Well, it's, it's what we're talking about before, is that these people are, are educated to, 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 um, to be servants in that field of let's call it the the important the important industries that keep that keep the fiat economy moving and we're talking about finance law uh insurance and mm. these are the people who hold those uh, that upper upper uh, let's say middle upper class management jobs and they're the ones who are comfortable they're the ones who can afford housing they're the ones who are getting paid well you know uh yeah five, six, seven digit uh, figures um, annually. They're, they're the ones who are, prote- they're the ones, uh, they're, they're the reasons why the system is continuing because they're the ones taking orders, but they're thinking they're doing well. It, as, I, as we talked about before, non-nefariously, maybe some are getting it, but they just don't want to leave that position because they're comfortable. And that is where the, where, where the danger lies is, is that, that like, let's say 10, 10% of the population who control the rest of the population yeah in terms of decision makings and and on all that but now we have a tool bitcoin which doesn't really care about that so much and the bottom the bottom half of the population can actually and i'm, I'm talking about everyone anyone but now the bottom half the people the the, the ones who've been priced out of everything who've always been at the end at the end of the uh of the of the cant- the, the cantalon effect and now have a tool like they don't need. They can only. They, they just need a few bucks, uh, a few euros a week to save it, and they 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 all have an advantage, and they will start to have an advantage in, in in life. In about ten years' time, they will start to be able to save and have considerable savings to start having a comfortable, meaningful life. It's it's beautiful. It really is yeah. beautiful. And so, you are a very early millennial. You are from eighty two. Correct. How is your experience talking to uh, our, our fellow, uh, you know, generational uh, peers about Bitcoin? What's the, how, how is your experience in educating them? Well, because I'm an early millennial, I'm in that bracket sort of like we early millennials are also part of that. We also got to experience analog and the transition to digital, di- digital mm-hmm. much, much greater than uh, later millennials. Um, so that was interesting, actually, got being going through that, um, growing up, seeing mobile phones go from uh, go from these uh, weird GM, GSM. Uh, I don't know how to call it. Uh, what stage of a mobile phone it was, but with text messaging and all that sort yeah, of yeah, stuff. Yeah, SMS and, they, and, and uh, SMS. And, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the simple internet and yeah, simple yeah, yeah. internet and all that sort of stuff, which was really exciting for us. And then all of a sudden, going and then finding us, and then and then going into the smartphones. Uh, mm. uh, we had, you know, we were using sm- we were using uh, mobile phones at the end of our high school, just, and then all of a sudden, five, six, seven years later. We were using smartphones, and a few days later, after the apps become a huge thing, and you know, it's yeah. it, it was it was a huge tra- thing for us. But okay, so the reason why I find it interesting with us is because we were because we are we. It's not just because of that, because we are a lot of those people. A lot of my friends actually probably make up a lot of those people that we that I talked about who have decent jobs in let's say insurance or finance or law and stuff, and they they. It's in their job not to understand what's uh, what's uh, how the system. Well, they understand how the system works for them, but it's they don't understand how the the broader, the greater system paradigm works, and they don't want it to change for themselves. So I think a lot of my friends are very stuck in their own ways, in mm-hmm. their ways that the the system likes them to be in. And even though I speak to them, I'm friends with them. And I speak to them about Bitcoin. I I find that it just they just see it still as some weird magic internet money, and 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 it's just a way of like just just like a like a tech stock that they can might make some money, and they they'll do that. They'll they'll buy some Bitcoin. They will buy some Bitcoin, but then they'll sell it just to make some money, and that's yeah. it. But the whole buy and hold, the whole hodl thing, uh, no, it's quite far away for with a lot of people. So I mean, we are very very early. Uh, with that crowd, so it's yeah. it's tough for them to understand. It's very tough for them to understand. I I don't blame them. Why is it I was able to get out of it? I'm not too sure. I guess I we go back to what we we're talking about before. Maybe my mind was a bit freer. I was a little bit more had a bit more agency to 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 uh, 
to realize that there was something else amiss going on in the world and I, could, I was able to st take steps back and, and look at look at the bigger picture. Uh, and I, I'd always been a little bit alternative when I was younger as well. I mean, I never really, when I went to school, I was never very good. I, was, I wasn't I was a straight-A student. I was just a little bit bored. I was like one of these C, C, C's, uh, always like an average C student. Mm. I used to like, uh, I was skateboarding all the time, you know, you know keeping, I wanted to keep them, to, not to keep them to myself often, but we had a little crew of people and we were a little bit alternative and stuff. And I think yeah. that shows a bit of agency as well. We weren't pretty prescribing to the... Uh, to the sports. I and, think so too, extra, actually. That's extra, a good example. Yeah, yeah. Extracurricular activities that the, the school would, would want you to do. You know, my, my CV for when I was at school was like, I did nothing for them. But I did a lot <laughs> for myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hated school, put it that way. I really hated school. I thought school was boring. I thought what they're teaching was, was boring. But I was also, but, but at the same time, I also liked learning stuff. I loved reading factual books on my own mm. time. I liked reading about geography. I liked reading... Not so much about history. I wish I picked up more about history, but then what history to read? <laughs> yeah, because the, history is only you know only the winners tell history. But yeah. now that's coming now, right now is understanding how to read history with a better with a better lens, with a Bitcoin lens. Yeah. But I was always into I was always into educating myself, like encyclopedias and learning about animals, the, the wildlife, the weather, mm -hmm. geography. Uh, do you still is, do that? Do you still yeah, have yeah, like yeah. your I evening love, rabbit hole? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, things like that. I just like reading lots of random stuff, and I'm yeah, a big yeah, weather yeah. weather enthusiast, like a huge right. weather enthusiast. And people know about me. A lot of my friends know that I'm a weather enthusiast. Okay. And cool. then when they realize that, hey, you know, so what's what's what about climate change, Philip? I was like, what climate change? <laughs> so let's go into it. So do you know how many? Do you know how much carbon there is in the atmosphere? Do you know how much it's increased over the last uh, two hundred years? And when did they you start know? measuring the temperature? <laughs> when did they start measuring exactly all these things? It's like, do you realize that you, we are historically like at very low levels of carbon right now, and they want to cut that even more? Do you realize how dependent we are? You know, okay, Philip. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> too yeah. much yeah <laughs> yeah it's uh I, I i i like the example of the skaters like what you said i i i i have a similar experience i think with school and there's always outside of school but also outside of jobs and stuff always just trying to learn new things and lately i actually realized what the what kind of like the the mindset there is it's kind of accepting or knowing that you don't know everything and that's why right everything is interesting exactly, basically exactly right even even uh when you read uh, opinions from others that you don't agree with or when people write down things that uh, are horrible or whatever like they are you can judge that, but still, like, you always have to think, like, what do I know, right? Like, it's it's a certain point of view from that person with their history or their experience or, um, you know, I, I I read about, but I don't know everything, of course, you know, a, a Balkan, Serbian um, area, right? Lots lots of stuff happening there with lots of different viewpoints. I'm still learning right now. There's a yeah, lot, exactly. there's a lot of rabbit holes there to, to, to study. Uh, I'm still yeah. trying to understand, piece everything together. Right? Well, that's yes. the point. Yes. Even you, yeah. right? Well, <laughs> so it's only recently that I've become more interested in, in the situation mm -hmm. here. Uh, as I said, as I m talked before, I had my cozy, cushy job, a financial job. They had me where they wanted in London. You know, I was, I was earning Okay, I could be, I could have been earning more, you know. I was still priced out of the, uh, the, 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 uh, the housing market because this London was just super expensive. But I was mm -hmm. renting, I was having a good time, um, and I never decided. I, I was at one point said I was going to move back to Serbia. I had that in my in my in my sights, but it wasn't until I met my wife and we got married. We got married in Belgrade, but I, we, but she moved to me. Yeah. yeah, we moved, uh, we lived in London. She she was living in London when, because uh, I had the, the job in London. We had our son, he was born in Belgrade, but then, you know, he was back in London. And then when uh, when COVID hit, when the, when when everyone went remote, you know, I'm, I guess you could call me the laptop class that I was able to take my job <laughs> <Yeah>. on. <laughs> I'm the lucky laptop class. I could take my job online. Everything went online. I was like, hey, this is our chance to move to Serbia. I can take this anywhere, so I can move to Serbia. So within two months of uh, of of everything going online, we had packed up, we had uh, emptied our flat, and moved to Serbia. Cool. Yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> so that's really when I started to really get into the whole um, monarchy thing. Because yeah. I always had wanted to be um, interested in it. I was there with my, uh, helping my father do some appearances here. Now, remember, we we're part of a non-functioning mon- uh, family. Yeah. Uh, that's not part of the system, but we are recognized by the majority of the population as the, as the royal family. The royal family here has had a hard time. It was almost, it was, monarchy was abolished in, 1940, in the 1940s after the Second World War. And the best thing that the, the socialists or whatever powers that be, I don't want to get down that rabbit hole, did <laughs> yeah. is a not murder us, but slowly tried to destroy us by infiltrating us with uh, agents like um, lovers that would, uh, that would um, tempt my grandfather away from my, from, from my grandmother and turn him into an alcoholic. And then he died young wow. from liver disease. It was very sad. And while my yeah. father, an only child, was brought up by, by other members of the family, his great grandmother on the other side and here we are today still surviving my father had three sons uh my older brother myself and my twin brother alexander my older brother's called peter and then here we are like uh, us three sons not really showing much interest in the whole monarchy thing going going to serbia we were kind of put off by the whole thing the war that happened in the 90s it's really quite sad, you know. Uh, my father remarried. We have a beautiful mother. He remarried to someone that I would say my brothers and I are not not very fond of, but uh, it was tough for us to live with her, and we were just put off by the whole thing, the whole Yugoslavia thing back then, mm-hmm. which then turned into Serbia um, as 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 Yugoslavia disintegrated after the eighties. Uh, but then, then something inside me just sparked, and I was like, I need to go back to Serbia. I need to learn more about. I need to get experience more of this. And both my brothers did this at some point in the early teens, like in 2013, 14. Uh, but they both left not having a, the best time or experience or whatever. And also the media turned against them as well, even though they weren't trying to be public at all. Mm. They were attacked. Uh, then I came, but when I moved in 2020, I moved already married and with a son. So I guess I was, uh, had that sort of strength, that backing of a, of a, of a, of a nuclear family, which is a good thing in Serbia. Fa- Serbians are very family oriented, oriented to people. Yeah. You know, they have very strong family values here, which is fantastic, which is one of the reasons why Serbia has stayed quite based all these years. Um, and I love this and I started learning more about this and I really became to love my home country. And now I'm learning to speak the language and stuff. So it's like it's it's like a rebirth of the Karen yeah, cool. And yeah. my son, who speaks Serbian, even though he was learning it in London, because my mother, my my mother, my wife speaks to him in Serbian because she's she's uh, she's Serbian. Uh, I speak to him in English, so he's completely bilingual. But he here uh, here he now goes to preschool and it's everything's in Serbian. He's like just a little Serb, and this is the first time a Karen Georgievich boy in the main branch is a. Uh, like a full on, full on yeah, serve, which is fantastic. Cool. Yeah. Then last year, my older brother decided we just uh, decided to abdicate in my favor. I mean, even though that there's non-functioning monarchy, it's it's a very good thing that for that to happen. It shows that the family still cares. Yeah. And that I care. My older brother doesn't want to be part of this thing. He wants his privacy, and I want to protect that with him. I want to make sure he uh, doesn't have to do all the things that i want to do like i I want to go and do good things here i want to use my voice and use my platform to help people yeah i want to call out the bullshit that i see over here i want to i know i want to make a difference over here and bitcoin's going to be part of that journey and did bitcoin fuel that a bit yes like i I love this the the arc is of course very inspiring that you go back to it's big well, you're, you're, them, you're yeah. homeless in a sense, right? And your son is born there. Like that but feels it's, it's like been a, a yeah. chal- it's been an absolute challenge moving here because A, I'm still trying to grasp the language, something that I should have done years ago, but it was very difficult when my mother doesn't speak it. My mother is a mm. Brazilian, a Brazilian princess and she speak, we speak to each other in Spanish. My father, he was never taught Serbian. I mean, we speak to each other in English. So Serbian came, we, there were, yeah. we, we, we had Serbian classes when we were kids, but they just didn't work because, we, as we said, we were put off by the whole thing. But now I'm, I'm starting to pick up on it. So that's one challenge. The other challenge is, uh, is yeah, okay, I, we get on well with, with the society. We have, uh, uh, we have some 
I'd say differences with the current states over here. You know, it's 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 a um, it, the republic, the 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 regime in 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 place right now has its has its ways. Um, but I'm I being a being a being a royal, being a monarch. I think I'm trying to be apolitical. But people saying that I'm I'm being becoming a little bit too political. But my mm. excuse, my 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 uh, my. My excuse to that, I would say excuse, the reason why I become, I seem to become political, it's because thanks to the money printer, everything has become political. That you, that anything you They are just realizing that, basically. Yes, they're realizing <laughs> right, that. Yeah. You can talk about anything and it can be linked to politics because mm. politics wants to be linked into everything because that's what politics is, thanks to the money printer, is that an interventionism has, has, has permeated uh, its way into every aspect of, of, our, of our lives. I just like to call out problems. I see. I see. I see an issue. We see a problem. We see some destruction of like some old buildings, for example, and we call it out. You know, we see that Rio Tinto, the big mining corporation from Australia, wants to have found. Well, I say they. Someone has found a lot of of um, lithium to mine in a beautiful natural park over here. Mm. We stand up against that because that's going to destroy the, the the environment and not create any jobs in doing that. And the money is just going to stay outside of the Serbia. So we are against that. Plus lithium for electric cars. Electric cars. I mean, you probably gather my opinions on like probably electric cars are not the greatest right now. <laughs> yeah, I know we probably need lithium batteries and cobalt for, for mobile phones and stuff, but we don't need... Uh, I think there's better ways of getting around doing that. And I think destroying natural uh, natural... Natural um, protected parks is not the way forward. And what's uh, the what's the what's the reaction of of the general people? Like uh... in general, we are very popular with the people for for for, for mm. standing up and trying, showing some balls to to actually go against the uh, the the state, I guess, because it's the state that benefits the most from this. Yeah. So you know, we we're, we're not afraid to do that, and you yeah. know, it comes it comes at a price. You know, it means that we uh, it's hard for us to live here to get things that we want and stuff because we are we are up against a big force. You know, where yeah. some you know it's 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 sometimes feels like we're swimming upstream. It's it's difficult. Um, like recently, the other day, I said the other day, in, in, in back in June or whenever it was, that, uh, we we appeared at the anti-violence, anti-state uh, rally. Not that we're showing our, our opinion against the anti-state, but we're showing many our opinion against that things are not right in the system. This ra- mm. These rallies were happened every Saturday after the Riblika school shooting. I don't know if you heard about that school shooting. In yeah, Serbia. that was a while ago, right? Like, yeah, uh, May the 3rd it happened yeah. this year. And that was uh, the same school that my wife went to when she was a kid. Oh, wow. Yeah, and, and it really affected. And this that's... never happens, right? No, it never happens. This does not happen. Uh, in general. That does yeah, not exactly. happen. Yeah. So the excuses were coming from the government. Oh, yeah, it's because of America, because of this, and because of that. No, there was something else to it. I don't want to get into the reasons of it, but people are pissed off that the things. It's just the way things were run here were not right, and it allowed for children to get to a certain point to carry a gun to school and shoot yeah. other children, which is just disgusting. Um, the school system here needs a lot of uh, renovation. So um, anyway, so we, yeah. we appeared at one of these government rallies to show and uh, anti-government, anti-state rallies. Uh, and yeah, that was uh, seen very well by a lot of people. But at the same time, the state looks at us as like, oh, and, yeah, <laughs> you guys again. <laughs> <laughs> there they are, yeah. There they are but, again. So how do you think... Like Bitcoin or Bitcoin mindset. Okay, or whatever so you that's the other thing. So, like, how does that intersect with social and political? Well, that's the other thing. Issues. That's the other. That's the other. The other um, hill I'm trying to. Oh, I say mountain I'm trying to climb is that <laughs> becoming a Bitcoiner here, an open, public, publicly open Bitcoiner. People in Serbia don't fully understand Bitcoin yet. Mm-hmm. Cash is king here. Uh, they, which is. They're very, Serbians are very skeptical people. After everything they've gone through in the last, God knows how many, 50, 70, 80, 100 years yeah. with, uh, with the world war, then with their, with, then with socialism and then with the uh, high levels of inflation and post socialism. And then in the nineties with the, with the other war. And then in the nineties with the third highest ever inflation, hyperinflation in the world has ever seen. It's they've gone through some shit over here, so they don't trust. They don't trust uh, the state. M- many Serbs don't trust the state, and many Serbs don't trust outside entities. So they see something like Bitcoin as too good to be true. 
they see it as something like that that some three-lettered agency has come up with to control the world. Yeah. But obviously, they haven't studied enough to understand that. Uh, for them, cash is key, which is, I think it's great that they are like cash because cash is private to that, to that extent. Yeah. You know? and they, and we, I, I, use, I have to use cash a lot here. I go to the So market. they already have the right yes, attitude in they a they have the right attitude, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And it just takes a little bit extra to them to, mm -hmm. to move over to, to Bitcoin. I use, we use, I mean, I use cash all the time here. When the most majority of the shopping I do for my groceries and, and food and everything, life, because I, um, I mean, I love, I love cooking. I love, um, feeding my family as I go to the market and, and, and there I get fruits and vegetables and mainly meats, of course, and everything's paid for in cash. Uh, and everyone wants to take cash. That's what it is. There's a few stalls and places that will accept cards, but in general, people want to take, are, are, are only transacting in cash. Uh, a few years ago, before I was a public Bitcoiner, there was a move from the state to fiscalize all this. So everyone has to put this on, on um, um, has to make this uh, on, on paper. And they yeah. wanted to make sure these transactions were recorded so they can tax them. We were openly against that. I didn't say the re I'd, uh, we, uh, I, at that point, I didn't g give the, 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 um, um, the solution is Bitcoin. I wasn't public ready ready at that point yet to go public about Bitcoin. But uh, yeah, they, the Serbs were very against that, and we're still running on on a very big high, high cash society. So that you can have the you have like different economies here. You have the the economy which is like the I say the real economy or not the real economy the the economy that's uh, that's tracked, and then the economy the I say which is the real economy, which is mm. the, almost the gray market, which is the, which is basically um, the the markets uh, farm to farm to stall to table, yeah, and exactly, that is yeah. huge here in Serbia. And this is what people keep people going. Inflation is an issue here still. Um, I mean, it's an issue in most parts of the world still. We're still in double digits. I see recently that the the M two and M zero money supply has actually reached record highs recently. Wow. Uh, it's because, well, I, it doesn't take an expert to realize that it's elections coming up again on December. The snap <laughs> elections happened because of the, uh, of the anti-state uh, government protests. So they decided to do snap elections because they realized that they can probably grab some uh, more seats in doing that. But what do they do? What do people do in, in this situation is they, uh, they increase the money supply so they can start spending on things to keep people happy. You know, they, they, they make uh, kindergartens free. They give a lot of it to the pensioners and mm. things like that. So uh, now we are at the highest level money supply ever. And this is after it coming, retracting a little bit earlier, earlier the year. But now we're going to see the effects of double digit inflation um, not, not shake away for many years to come. And do um, you have the feeling you can? Do you have the freedom to talk about this? Yeah, I'm just writing an article right now, which I've just published. I mean, just published. I've just sent to the to the uh, to to um, one of the biggest uh, newspapers for their business section, and I talk about this. I see the uh, I see the article ready for approval in my inbox. Hopefully, cool. they keep that part where I talk about M two and M zero money supply. I don't yeah. talk about I don't link it to the elections, but uh, I'm I'm freely able to speak to you about now about this because. It's a bit safer here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I say, look, this is reckless money. money uh, this is very reckless monetary um, uh, policy practice. You know, if we continue increasing money supply and continue with our two or seven percent um, ratios, uh, capital ratios, uh, reserve ratios for our banking, then this is all this is just going to end up in tears. Yeah. Uh, well and so countries have a big incentive to do this. Well, you, the, one example is, of course, elections, and then there's promises or there's oh, stuff yes, the yeah. that they yeah. do, right? Uh, but specifically with um, your work at Gentry, you focus on nation state Bitcoin adoption. If the incentive on one side is, uh, well, if I can print the money, then I can stay in power versus if, if I hold Bitcoin, I right. can be more sort of like... How how do you see that, and and why why will nations eventually want to adopt Bitcoin? Well, you, yeah, I, this is this is a, what we're at, Jan three. You explained it at the beginning of the of the of the of your of your show, your podcast. That Jan three, we are our mission is to increase or speed up, I should say, hyper Bitcoinization around the world by introducing it to nation states, um, also corporations, 
high net worth individuals, uh, influential people, and just spreading the word of Bitcoin. That is our marketing, our, our ethos, I guess. Uh, but also we have the technologies to help that. We are a, a, a Bitcoin, infra, uh, a digital infrastructure uh, company ex- focused on expanding Bitcoin technology around the world. Yeah. Uh, Launching a wallet soon. Yep. So the, yeah, you probably heard Aqua mm-hmm. Wallet soon to be launched. We have the beta coming up soon. Uh, we're aiming for the launch on January 3rd next year it's going to be a it's going to be very it's a very interesting wallet because it's going to be the one of a kind completely bitcoin centric wallet with uh with usdt on liquid uh, that's the liquid side chain so it's not usdt on tron or or uh or or, or, or whatever one of those shit coins it is pure bitcoin uh usdt on bitcoin which is which is big um also, there's going to be lightning on it as well, and you can hold other 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 sort of digital securities there, but on 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 liquid. It's going to be huge in Latin America because in Latin America, as you probably realize, is they they need to have the exposure to the dollar, but also some people also want to have exposure to Bitcoin. Yeah. So this is a wallet for both Bitcoin pure Bitcoin maximists. They can hold that Bitcoin self custody it for themselves. There's a strong, easy user interface, but also for, with with advanced, there'll be also for advanced users as well, but also for novices getting into the space who probably don't understand Bitcoin, but understand what USDT is and need to have exposure to USDT. But then they also have the option to going into Bitcoin mm. and saving in Bitcoin. And this this is that, and that's why we think stable coins are a crucial part in the journey of understanding what Bitcoin. I know stable coins, you can people will see them as a shit coin, but I, you can also see them as a bridge. To understanding bitcoin yeah and uh, maybe maybe who knows you know in in, in argentina one you know the the, the 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 second biggest country in latin america where hopefully they will they will uh, dismantle the central bank there and they're, they're, they're going to go into dollarization if they will if that happens an option would be that they could go into onto stable coin and uh, that that would be huge for uh for for uh for for the uh I say the crypto market, but also for the Bitcoin market, for um, for someone like ourselves who are working to put Bitcoin um, to put USDT on Bitcoin only. Yeah. Um, I know, and yeah, that that's one side. The other thing is we are soon also releasing Jan three financials, which is our, our OTC. We will be selling Bitcoins because as we speak to nation states and individuals. We're also selling them Bitcoin, not just the Bitcoin story, but we want to make sure they're able to buy Bitcoin from a safe yeah. situ- from a safe location with good fees, and we are able to, we will have the right the right methods of custody for them, so they can buy the thing that they need and buy the thing and not some stupid ETF. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, back to yeah, like back to the question, like the nation states, like what oh is yeah, the sorry. they, they I, have I, a strategy? No, no, no. Like this is good, the gentry uh, introduction. But like the nation states, like their incentive, like when, when, and why would the incentives for a country change? Right. So, uh, um, Samson Mao, CEO, he was in Colombia, Suriname, uh, uh, etc. Like, look, so in yeah. Bitcoin strategy, every country is going to be different. I- what happened in El Salvador is an outlier, and it will continue to be an outlier for, for years to come. You, democratic processes around the world will find it very difficult to adopt a Bitcoin standard quickly. Yeah, It's doable, but there's going to be a lot of hoops and jumps. To, uh, you're going to have to jump through a lot of hoops, a lot of bureaucracy to go through. What is easier would be some dictatorship or let's call it an absolute monarchy. I mean, if I was an absolute monarchy, you would have a Bitcoin standard in a second. <laughs> uh, but no, what I'm trying to say is that every country is different and there's some gonna that some countries will, will, will adopt it quicker than others. Now, what type of adoption will, will happen is 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 the question, I guess. Um, El Salvador's model is actually quite a good model. But they are also another unique position that they didn't have. Well, they did have their own currency, which was sort of phased out in the early 2000s. Mm. So they were already in the dollarization stage. So he just had to add private money to that, which was Bitcoin, and allow the, the market to uh, to decide which is, which is the better currency. So that is, to me, a very, very good strategy, is, is a very, um, uh, let's call it, an abrasive transition yeah. towards and, a Bitcoin And also standard. in a country that... There wasn't really much to, I almost want to say, steal from in a sense. Yes, yes, you know, exactly. It, it, the new leader in charge, 
you know, there, there was not that much to exploit. <laughs> no, for the leader in charge, he, he was unexploitable. He, yeah. he, he was uncorruptible. He's rich. He's comfortable. And he doesn't, he's, he's a Bitcoiner. He's orange pilled and he wants to do good for his country. Yes, people can call him a dictator, strong man, X, Y, Z, but he cleaned up El Salvador, Noka El Salvador now. Yeah. Whether his policies will last for the future, we'll, we'll, we'll see, but he's done things and I think it'll be very hard for the people to turn back to anything different after what he's done. Yeah. You like fifty like if like seven years ago, if you said to me, yeah, you know, look at uh, in seven years' time, uh, El Salvador will be will be the jewel of, of of Latin America. People from all around the world will be moving there because it's the safest country in the world in Latin in one of the safest countries in Latin America, if not in the world. And people are moving there for business, for a more comfortable life. I'd say you'd be <laughs> yeah. crazy, yeah, because you know very well that I knew where El Salvador was because. Why did I know where El Salvador was? Not because I'm a surfer, but because the capital of El Salvador, San Salvador, was the murder capital of the world. Now, no longer. Now, it's just one of the safest cities you could be. It's fantastic in in, yeah. in the Americas. Um, yeah. It's, so I think, yeah, I think that his strategy was unique, and I'm we are seeing in our trips to Latin America that there that his strategy is having the Bukele effect, a ripple effects across the rest of Latin America and other countries are like, ooh, that's interesting. We want a bit of that. We want to see yeah. how we can do that. So we've had conversations in Costa Rica, Guatemala, and as you can see recently in Suriname, um, the president of, um, of, of Colombia has, has, uh, has opened the door to Samson just recently. We were in Argentina last year as well, and Mexico as well. All these countries are going to are going to start exploring ways that uh, they can uh, they can adopt it. I say those countries when I say when I mention the country, I don't really talk about the state itself. I talk about individuals, mm. whether they're in the state or not. There's a lot of movements happening within these countries. A lot of groups, a lot of Bitcoiners, a lot of uh, uh, orange pill um, um, troops trying to make this happen. And I think one of the best ways that they're doing it is, I think the legal tender route is one thing that gets people talking, but the, really the, the quick, one of the best ways for, for, uh, for adoption is first through, um, through mining. Because when you, when you, when people realize that the, that the energy that they have, that that can be monetized and then that can then you use to, to fund infrastructure projects. Yeah. And then Jan3 can help with like, say with, through our Jan3 financial, which is the other arm of that is to help with Bitcoin bonds. And we can help raise um, financial products that can help for, for the, for infrastructure projects and so forth. Then that becomes interesting to them. That shows that they, that that Bitcoin is more than just money. That it also has a lot more utility. Yeah. And then they start going down the whole energy rabbit hole. Because Bitcoin, <laughs> the asset for them, uh, my view on it currently, it gives them more sovereignty in a yes, sense, right? Exactly. Like uh, the, some countries you mentioned, obviously were colonialized before. They, st they still have ties to. Um, the, the countries that occupied them. I'm not even talking about Africa, but by yeah, the yeah. way, where it's even more crazy, you think. Um, but they were occupied yeah. for some reason, for some reason, because it's the, and the main yes, reason exactly. is for resources. Yeah. And exactly. those resources yeah, yeah. were always plundered. Yes. And this is why the likes of the IMF and World Bank and those structures yeah. are in place there, because that, 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 those structures have the... Um, on on on, it's on the, the modern colonial, the, <laughs> colonialism, yeah, yeah. On paper, they say yes, they're going to help countries de uh, redevelop or develop, and they're going to loan them money, and they're going to help them develop mm. and to become, you know, first world developed countries and all that. But then, when you dig down deeper, what their practices are that uh, no, that doesn't work that way. They uh, they come, they they find ways of uh, of of, of um, they get money, they get capped, they get investment from uh, from 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 the richer countries that don't invest directly into the countries. They 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 invest into shell companies that are go back to the richer companies, and a few people only a few people make money out of this. And then there's a loan that's created, and then now these loans have yeah. interest to pay back, and then all of a sudden that country is then indebted to the uh, to the IMF yeah. or the World Bank or whatever, and then repeat this over and over again, yeah. and not many projects and not much development happens. And then you for, just get, for anyone listening, yeah. I think the book uh, is. I uh, just looked it up. Uh, it's from. If you're triggered by this or think like, "Hey, what is this new topic?" Uh, it's it's a new book by Alex Gladstein, who is 
head of strategy, I think, at the Human Rights Foundation. Yes. And he has a book called uh, Hidden Repression, How the IMF oh, and World Bank. He's the best at talking about this. Yeah. He knows yeah. how to speak about this so well. I uh, really respect what yeah. he's... Yeah, he's... I, I listened to a podcast with him and it was... Uh, yeah. One of the things, like one of the subjects where I had not thought about before, I knew the name IMF, I knew the name World Bank, but when he explained how that worked, uh, basically what you just said, right? Yeah. It, and it is a sort of modern <laughs> colonialism in a sense because they take over an economy and all the policy and all these things to to benefit, in essence, Western countries. Of course. <laughs> and when I listened to him, I was like, wow, totally unaware of okay, yeah. how, to, like, very And He goes into good detail about yeah, what's happening. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. very well researched. He's very well traveled. He yeah. knows what he's talking about. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's Proper, proper hero, Bitcoin hero, I'd say. I'd say. Yeah. Um, also, another one to listen to is what got me into the subject as well was uh, one podcast, and it was a, a but based on the book is um, Tales of an Economic Hitman. And oh, this wow. is, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Tales of an Economic Hitman, and this is some guy. I forget his name. I can't think of it on the top of my head. But he wrote a book. Uh, anyway, if you type in Tales of Economic Hitman. There's a podcast about 40 minutes long, I think from the, the two, 2020 or 2021. And he is a former... Uh, yeah, confessions um, of an Economic no, 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 Hitman. No, sorry, yeah. not Tales, Confessions of an Economic John Hitman. John Perkins. That's it. That's him. Yeah. That's it. The so, shocking sto inside story of how America really took over the world. Yeah, All that's right. it. That's that's so it. That sounds fascinating. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure Gladstein knows about that one. That's a really good listen. I mean, read. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you can read the book, but uh, I, I, I uh, uh, yeah, I, I actually just went for the easy I'm route. Gonna, I'm going to look it up. But <laughs> yeah, yeah so, so, you know, Bitcoin as money being more sovereign part for those types of countries, but also... The energy part, I also heard Samson talk about uh, a meeting with the uh, governor of Java in Indonesia, right? Where yes, like his angle to to get people who are in power towards Bitcoin is the, you know, energy is power. You know, energy is leverage, is power, is money, is income <laughs> type yes, of Yes, exactly. Because uh, you can angle, create, right? as we talk about, is Bitcoin bonds. You can do them at a much bigger, greater, like national level. You can do them at a local, sort of municipal mm. level. Yeah, they have to be structured to work for the for the for the for the uh, local for the for the nation or for the local or, or the local area. But yes, money is energy, and if you if you tap it right, you uh, I mean tap it right, you just plug in your Bitcoin miners in there and and have the right structure and the right financial uh, structure with 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 a, with a bond paying out x amount of coupons over like a 10 year 10 over 10 years with half of it reinvested into bitcoin so you know you'll get paid back and and what you mine where well, the uh the the um the rewards and mining can go back into it or to pay the coupons or to go back into the investment anyway there's so many ways of structuring this mm. that this money can be used without taxing anyone and that's the key is not taxing anyone it's to stop taxing people and instead, actually, yeah. actually, actually, you can mine money to use that to to pay for roads, schools. I well, don't know. Actually, also utilize the resources that exactly. were uh, given to the country, right? A exactly. In, uh, not not from the people, but well, in I think in Java, it's also um, uh, uh, geothermal and it's geothermal, you know, with, though, the, yeah. uh, with the volcanoes and stuff. Yeah. So, and uh, that's great because then you actually, as a state, you can also take better better care of your population in a sense right you don't need them to take well, yeah, care of them exactly. <laughs> basically um but and, use uh yeah and yeah sorry i was thought what i forgot where i was going into but yeah no just that the, the mining side it's you see you're starting to see it now you saw uh bhutan the kingdom bhutan secretly yeah. mining bitcoin for for a few years fun yeah. It shows you. It just shows you. People who are aware and or intelligent are realizing that this is what this is what money is. Also, the uh, well, in um, UAE, Oman, yeah, the UAE, in UAE Oman. Yeah. No, it was it Bahrain or Oman who who invested? I think it was a, Oman. Oman, but who, it, and no, also in Oman. UAE, yeah, Oman. But Oman yeah. invested about a billion into Bitcoin mining yeah. as well. Yeah, I heard a great reasoning by Parker Lewis about that. That think about, and this is also. Um, how I think about you know this uh, the uh, banks or or you know bigger institutions talking about Bitcoin. Before you take a decision like that and invest a million, 
so many layers of people who have to say something about that, right? Or sign that off. Uh, uh, and also a billion maybe in Oman is not that much money, but it's still a long-term vision, right? It's not, that, that is not an experiment. That, That's that, a good that, way that, of looking at it, it, yes. It, it, imp it implies that they understand where they think something could be going, right? And it's a serious, it's not an experiment. This is a serious thing. And also in UA, uh, yeah, or is, maybe that's Oman, but I think in that area, Parker Lewis also shared, there was like this uh, oil deal with India where they got paid in rupees. You know, he said, that is an experiment, you know, because <laughs> if, if you can sell energy for another currency than dollars, that's a step one of the experiment, right? But then if you sell energy, you want to sell it for energy, energy commodity money and that is bitcoin right so right, there yeah. like he shares about how the how, how, how those things eventually come together and uh yeah I've, i i find it interesting that not many more people actually view it in that way because I, why would a country invest a billion for for fun <laughs> that makes no exactly, sense exactly yeah. yeah i'm looking so, forward to reading his book gradually then suddenly it just came out yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that already out or yeah, almost? Apparently, yeah. just, apparently it just come out yeah, on, sa on Safety's um, safe house, his, Store, uh, yeah. his uh, yeah. publishing house. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Well, um, I, I, I was looking at the time. Uh, thanks for t for taking the time. I, I think uh, we should we should wrap it up a bit. But I have one one last question sure, that uh, I asked to everyone. Uh, what's uh, what's a core belief that uh, you will never let go? <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I think this is core belief that's come more in recent years, especially after becoming um, understanding how the world works within in, in monetary world works, how it, well, how it being a Bitcoiner is that we, we always need to look to leave a better future for our, for our children. Like literally, we're just borrowing the world today for, for our children. Yeah. Uh, we have to lower our time preference. That's what it's all about. Otherwise, we're just going to destroy this, this beautiful planet. Thanks for sharing. I think that's a great, great end. And uh, thanks again for coming on. I will link to your social profiles and gentry in the show notes. Please. And uh, yeah, hope to stay in touch. And uh, thanks it's again. It's been an absolute pleasure, Bram. Thank you so much for having me on. Thank you. Cheers. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, it would be amazing if you could rate, review, and subscribe on the podcast platform of your choice. It will help us educate more millennials on the importance of Bitcoin. You can follow and connect with me on Twitter. I'm Bramke, that's at B-R-A-M-K. And if you are or know someone who has an interesting perspective on Bitcoin that's worth sharing, hit me up. I read and reply to every single message. I appreciate your support and hope you'll be here for the next episode. Thanks for listening. Bye.